So it's come to our attention that AMD's brewing up quite the show for its big Navi launch. And to be clear, when most outlets talk about this and use this phrase, they're referring to 6,000 series graphics cards or RDNA 2. We've been working with SKUs like the RX 5600 XT, 5700 XT, and we're expecting cards like the 6900 XT, I guess, to launch within the next few weeks. And that's great for us consumers because it seems like Team Red's prepared to undercut competitor pricing even more than we initially expected because Nvidia stuff looks too darn good to pass up. So let's chat. The Vengeance A4100 is Corsair's latest take on a professional gaming and streaming machine packing a Ryzen 7 3700X and NVIDIA RTX 2080 series graphics. Enjoy among the finest Corsair components, including an RM75080 Plus Gold power supply and Vengeance DDR4 memory, along with tasteful, I'll say, RGB integration. Oh, and did I mention the included Elgato 4K60 capture card? Wouldn't be a proper streaming PC without one. Learn more by clicking the link below. A few noteworthy sources have confirmed via AMD partners that a 16 gig SKU priced somewhere between the RTX 3070 and 3080 will be launching relatively soon, and that's super exciting. Since AMD already have a pretty good idea where Ampere stacks up for the price, I mean, they know how their own cards perform right before they're released, they can price this model, whatever the 16 gig model happens to be, we'll call it the 6900 XT for consistency sake, uh, rather aggressively in an attempt to steal market share. That's music to my ears, and it should be to yours as well. Look, we've been talking about NVIDIA because NVIDIA has already announced its top cards with the Ampere lineup. And while I don't necessarily agree with the branding behind the RTX 3090, the 3080 and especially the 3070 seem like pretty incredible values on the surface. So it's easy to be hyped, but it's also easy to overlook the competition. See, AMD has been struggling over the last few years to bring anything viable to the top tier graphics card market. The RTX 2080, 2080 Super, and especially the 2080 Ti were all left basically uncontested for the better part of Turing's life cycle. So a resurgence would be welcomed wholeheartedly. So here's what we think we know so far. The 16 gig model, which we expect to be the flagship of the RDNA 2 lineup, should be priced at around 599 bucks, which again, places it directly between the 3080 and the 3070. Double the VRAM of the slightly cheaper competitor seems like a godsend in a time when 4K is becoming more and more attainable, especially at higher frame rates. And several media outlets have already begun to criticize the 3070 for its relatively lackluster frame buffer on account of its touted RTX 2080 Ti-like performance, a card which sports 11 gigs of VRAM, mind you. So if you're going to release a, a newer card that you say is better than the best from the last generation, but you're going to offer up less VRAM? I mean, I can see why people are upset. At first glance, it didn't really bother me because I'm not a huge 4K gamer, but if you play a lot of AAA titles in 4K and looking for around 60 to 100 FPS, that's, that's kind of upsetting. I mean, heck for that matter, the RTX 3080 sitting at 10 gigs doesn't seem all that appealing either, which ties back into the discussion that we had in the last video about Nvidia's price structure breaking down more so by available VRAM this time around than raw GPU horsepower. We expect somewhere around 5,120 shaders, 80 compute units, and a fairly significant efficiency bump in the realm of 50% or so over the previous generation as AMD have recently claimed. One could interpret this as RD DNA 2 boasting a 50% performance bump at the same power draw, assuming you could get to that 50% bump, or identical performance in a card that consumes 25% less power and with a third fewer cores, as Tom's hardware puts it. And this additional headroom obviously opens a few extra doors. I expect that much of what AMD brings to the table will compete directly with the RTX 3070 from a GPU perspective, and potentially with the RTX 3080 from a VRAM perspective, though it seems like this card is stacked more to be GPU bound, you know, GPU limited, uh, more so than VRAM limited. Whereas in NVIDIA's case, it seems like the opposite might be true, where the, the GPU is just significantly more powerful than what the VRAM can handle. Now, again, we do expect that top tier SKU to have 16 gigs of VRAM. There's also talk of a 12 gig model, uh, maybe the 6800 XT, something like that. Uh, could be the exact same card, just offered in a 12 gig variant. So it's kind of a two front battle for AMD in this department, and, and that's why they expect things so aggressively. They're kind of playing catch up on account of several hurdles in their past, which is why they've struggled to release something comparable to the 
RTX 3090 or back then what would have been the RTX 2080 Ti uh, or just whatever we'd expect in that slot, in the top slot for each generation. I mean, this is AMD's price war, right? If you can't beat your competition from a performance perspective, you can at least pressure them into lowering prices across the board, but especially where you expect SKUs to clash. And this is typically in the mid to lower range graphics card markets. Similar things have been done in the CPU department, uh, though Ryzen hasn't really run into the same kinds of struggles that Intel has uh, with regards to development and yield. So it's not really an apples to apples comparison. And if you're wondering why the CPU market looks so different and why AMD is clearly undercutting the competition, I think it's less about AMD wanting to undercut Intel, although they have done this in the past, uh, but more so about Intel just not being able to keep up uh, its supply, which is why prices haven't really been able to adjust much. You just don't have enough of that product to offer uh, to, to price it competitively. Now, we already expected Nvidia to reduce prices pre-launch in an attempt to shield themselves from whatever AMD produced, but it seems AMD's taken things a step further by supposing cutting prices down to $549 for the 16 gig model. And that's the one we expect again to launch first. I should note, however, that I wouldn't be surprised if AMD left things exactly the way they originally planned with the price of reportedly, what, 599 bucks. Now, if they're that confident in the SKU's potential, then the performance should more than justify the ask. But conversely, if they're reactionary and do slash prices, what does that tell you about NVIDIA's value and how AMD looks at the competition? This coming from the company that claimed to at one point bluff NVIDIA into cutting GPU prices in the wake of RDNA 1, so take that for what you will. Another thing we expect from these consumer grade cards is the inclusion of GDDR6, not HBM2. Thank God. They've run into problems in the past with costs associated with HBM, which is a sort of stackable memory. It's directly on the GPU chip itself next to the die uh, with ultra high bandwidth as a result of where it's placed. So I I'm glad to see them take a more conventional approach here. Gamers, for the most part, are aren't gonna notice those kinds of limitations. And it should allow them to compete on more on a, a level playing field with NVIDIA, uh, which has also resorted to GDDR6 and 6X in its top models. And I don't expect either very to bottleneck cards of this caliber. I mean, video memory traditionally isn't the bottleneck. It would be a pretty poor design if it was. Next, we've the big question, performance. Reports from earlier this year pegged Big Navi at around a 15% improvement over the current, at the time, reigning champion for gamers, the RTX 2080 Ti. And if we assume Nvidia isn't misleading customers with its 3070 is more powerful than 2080 Ti claim, and I don't really think that they are, it would be very weird and um, it'd, be, it'd be a pretty poor marketing decision to make a statement like that and not be able to even remotely back it up. I think you would uh, experience the wrath of the media at that point and they're just, they're not into that game. I don't think they need to overhype anything. Uh, they, they traditionally have been able to come pretty close to what they claim. We don't expect them to always be exact with what they're saying, but uh, I think ballpark, it wasn't a bad estimation. But anyway, this would place Big Navi right in the sweet spot. So just over the RTX 3070 in terms of both price and performance. And that's not bad. I'd also like to point out that uh, while talking with them earlier this year at CES, AMD was reluctant to drop graphics card prices any further than they needed at the time. This kind of ties back into the whole, well, 599 versus 549 thing. Will they do it? Will they won't? Uh, I asked them point blank and, and in retrospect, it was kind of a poorly worded question for reasons we just talked about. But I asked them why they didn't bother undercutting competitor pricing like they've done with CPUs. And again, that's an apples to oranges comparison, not really a fair question. Uh, I wish I could have gone back and reworded it. Uh, but their response was actually pretty simple, pretty blunt, and I appreciated that. It was, we don't have to. We're content with where we're positioning things currently uh, and, and with where consumers expect performance to fall given the price of the product in this market. And I think that reveals a bit of the mentality behind the scenes from Team Red. Like they've, they've likely no desire to be a better value than Nvidia because they really don't need to be a better value. They just need to be a viable alternative. That's usually enough to drive sales. They're positioning themselves exactly where you would expect given the card's performance. And that's what uh, supposedly we will see here with the uh, 6900 XT card. And I'm okay with that. Look, it means more choices again for you and me. And if they can simultaneously pull off price bluffs like they claim they've done in the past, 
I'm all the more for it because if they do force Nvidia to lower prices, then they kind of inadvertently compelling themselves to do the same. So these will be PCIe 4 compatible cards, no doubt, much like their 5000 series counterparts would be a bit weird to go backwards there. Uh, but again, we don't expect PCIe bandwidth to be the limiting factor on a card of this caliber, something like an RTX 3090. Okay, maybe Nvidia claims, I, I think, a, a, a few percent at the most uh, in performance lost uh, transitioning from PCIe 4 to 3. And that's in the top tier card that they offer, which I don't think should be considered a gaming card, but that's how they're marketing it, so whatever. Uh, the, the RTX 3080, RTX 3070, 6900 XT, uh, I don't think these will be PCI 3 bottlenecked at all. I haven't worked out the numbers to see if the, the bandwidth requirements uh, line up, but uh, just going off the surface here, I mean the RTX 2080 Ti uh, works just fine on PCI 3. Uh, so it's kind of a future-proof thing. Again, doesn't really matter in a skew of this caliber, but it is worth noting. All that to say, I don't see AMD launching an NVIDIA killer anytime soon, and I'm honestly okay with it. Like, I wasn't expecting one. I think people are, are, are kind of hoping that AMD launches something that competes with the likes of the RTX 3090. I don't see that happening. I mean, if AMD can even like just match a 2080 Ti performance-wise uh, and have more memory at, at its disposal, I think that's a win for around five to 600 bucks. I don't think we need a top tier competitor because a majority, a vast majority I should say, of gamers are not interested in spending over $1,000 on a graphics card. And, and if you're willing to spend that much money on it, uh, I imagine that uh, you want a card that's kind of been refined at least a generation or two. The 3090 is kind of like the Titan replacement, right? So um, if you were buying Titans in the past or you bought a 2080 Ti, and you're kind of on that, you know, you're in that mindset where you want to keep spending this amount of money on something. I mean, this is a second generation of Tensor and RT cores. Um, I think it's a safer play this time around than it would have been last time around. Again, though, stay tuned for those reviews because opinions on this card could change. I think that the 3090 is one of those cards that you just, it's, it's, it's confusing and we're not really gonna know why it exists until we actually start testing it. And not just gaming environments, but also productivity environments. This, this looks much more like a productivity card than it does uh, a gaming card, which is why I'm so confused by the marketing. But anyway, at this point, only the power draw and driver variables are left to deal with. AMD's had a rough recent history, I should say, with software for its 57, 56, and 5500 models. And it uh, remains to be seen just how well 6000 series cards play with the latest revisions of Adrenaline. As, as for power draw, Nvidia has shifted things in Samsung's direction for future fabs in silicon, the efficiency of which still hasn't totally been worked out. The yields haven't totally been worked out yet. Uh, these new Ampere cards will consume exceptional amounts of power, no doubt, debatably a worthy trade-off, but still, I mean, when you're talking about proprietary connectors, I mean, they're not doing that for no reason. They're not complicating this for no reason. They just would rather have a proprietary connector than three additional PCIe 8 pins tacked onto the PCB. I mean, it just would look silly. But AMD saturation of TSMC availability has given the 7 nanometer process time to mature, and I wouldn't be surprised if this time around we see comparable or even better performance per watt from Team Red over Team Green. So NVIDIA has the more mature architecture in the sense that this is, again, the second revision of, of RT and, and Tensor integration, but AMD's been with TSMC for a good while, and TSMC's been treating them well. So I think RDNA 2, based on what we already think we know, is pretty exciting, and I think a majority of the fight will take place in the mid-tier again, as we've come to expect from AMD. And like I said earlier, they've been kind of playing catch-up, and it seems as though they're, they're almost like a generation behind when it comes to their best, because if their best is only going to somewhat match the 3070, I mean, that would have been great if it came out two or three years ago when the 2080 Ti had the crown, or a year ago, you know what I mean? But uh, now, I mean, the 2080 Ti is only kind of mid-tier, mid to high tier, the 3070. Um, that's not good enough to, to, to take the crown or coming anywhere close to, to taking the crown from Nvidia. But uh, again, seeing as though majority of consumers are interested in the, in the expensive $1,000 plus cards, I don't think it's a huge issue. Now, it would be nice if something at the upper end was released, but if I had to choose, obviously, I'd opt for attainability and market share. And that said, if we got a card from AMD that traded blows with the 3080, maybe even a, a 3080 Super, or 3080 Ti, that would be pretty cool. And I suppose depending on how you looked at it, it's already kind of trading blows with the 3080 in the VRAM department. So if Nvidia responds 
it will be with a SKU that boasts significantly more than eight or 10 gigs of GDDR6 or 6X. That's my prediction. And in my head, it makes a bit more sense for Nvidia to kind of differentiate SKUs based on memory now, seeing as though eight gigs, I mean, it's just not enough if you're talking about a 2080 Ti capable card having only eight gigs of VRAM. That's that's already kind of a downgrade at 499. Granted, the price looks great for the for the GPU horsepower we're expecting, but uh, I think they're gonna start differentiating SKUs more so by memory, which means that Nvidia will more or less kind of be reactionary to AMD's launch of a card that has way more VRAM at its disposal than the flagship that Nvidia called the RTX 3080. Interesting, Nvidia called the 3080 the flagship and not the 3090. What, well, well, what was that about? So anyway, stay tuned in the days and weeks ahead as we learn more about RDNA a2 and AMD's response to Nvidia's rather compelling announcement. I'm hoping we have a bit more success in the mid to high tiers this time around from Team Red across all fronts because it'll drive prices down even further and that's great for you and me. We don't want one graphics card to rule them all, but that 3090, that, that thing is a freaking beefcake. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing and I'll catch you in the next one. Check out our public Discord server as well. It's gonna be linked in the video description. We just, uh, we just chat, help each other out. You can submit links for crazy PC ads, things like that. Anyway, my name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.